One year ago today, our old habits got a huge shakeup as COVID-19 officially became a pandemic. What lessons have doctors learned and how has the virus affected all of us 365 days later? Infectious disease specialist Dr. Zane Chagla and clinical psychologist Nicole McCants have been kind enough to join us this morning. Good morning to you both. Morning. Dr. Chagla, first question to you. If you could go back a year, what would you do different? Yeah, I would have seen a lot more family and friends over January and February for sure. Um, you know, I, 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 there was a lot of science that I think that came out from the pandemic that ended up being junk science at the end. And, and I think, you know, if, if you could go back, you wish you would have uh, um, uh, understood some of it a little bit better. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's the connection of family and friends. I think that got lost that, uh, that I wish we had at the beginning. And if we knew we had the time to actually go back to. Yeah, further to that, Nicole, I want to ask you, I know, you know, everyone's different. It's affected us all differently. And depending on demographics and age groups, you are noticing similarities. So take us through what you've seen in kids versus adults and seniors. Yeah. So first of all, I think every human being right now is going through so much loss, loss of routine, loss of celebration, loss of friends and family. So a lot of us are actually grieving. And because this is still going on, I don't think we've fully been able to process the last 12 months. And I don't think we will until this is finally in a better place because of all the micro traumas, all these people dying and, and everything. Oh, her signal froze. Okay, we'll try and work on that while we head over um, to you, Dr. Chagla. Dr. Chagla, Chagla whose signal I think is still going, we can uh, go to him. Uh, Dr. Chagla, are you, I mean, I wanted to, I was going to ask you emotionally, like, what do you, what is your reaction if I were to ask you, describe Canada slash Ontario's response to this over the last 365 days? But I know you're a man who keeps emotion out of what you normally do. So I'll just <laughs> say, clinically, what do you make of this nation's response and the province's response? Look, I, I think we we did what we could with the science when we came through. I mean, as the science evolved, I think we we evolved with it. Could it have been a bit quicker? Absolutely. Um, I do think we did try to balance people's mental health. We tried to balance businesses being open, um, and uh, and potentially, you know, could have reacted a bit sooner. And I think going into the next 100, 365 days, you know, the one thing that that still is missing and, and I feel is uh, is not really talked about is who COVID is still affecting. And and again, it's it's not just the everyday person who's working from home. You're still seeing people who are at the lowest incomes. You're still seeing people who are at the most essential workplaces that are getting affected by COVID way more than the rest of us. And, and I think that's the one piece that's uh, clinically missing in all of this that we need to keep pushing and recognizing that those supports need to be there as we move forward. For sure. Nicole's back. Uh, we wanted to ask you, what are the long-term effects? You mentioned microtrauma. What are some of those long-term effects of social distancing? Yeah, I think we don't even know yet, right? Like we're just seeing an influx of kids with depression and anxiety, with learning issues because they're behind and really struggled in school. I think the biggest thing is, is you know, people reaching out for the help that they need. Uh, friends are great, but at this point, reaching out for professional help now um, to really begin to process what's happened because it's been so much and in, in a way that, again, that I'm not even sure we're capable of knowing yet. Yeah, always reach out for help. Thank you both for being here this morning, uh, Nicole and Dr. Chagla. And please do, we're nearing the end of this thing. Just stay in there a little bit longer. This has proven how resilient. We all are, that's for sure. Yeah, we learned a lot about ourselves. Uh, and we also learned how much love we have for frontline workers. We thank them a million times over the last year for what they do. As we go to break, uh, here's a thank you for the million and first time.